Hey guys, got another Cinema 40 tutorial for you. And this time around we're going to be talking about the P blurb node and thinking particles. So what I've got is a little animation that I put together to show you what we're going to be doing with the P blurb node and what it can be used for. So basically we're going to take this text which is Maxon and it's going to use the P blurb node to break down and fragment and then morph into another text which is going to say uh, cinema 4 or C4D. So I'm just going to make sure this is set to 30 frames per second. It's going to hit play. And this is what we're going to be creating. So it morphs from one object, fragments, and changes into another. Now it doesn't have to be text like I'm showing here. It can actually be just any object that you want, just as long as it's a polygonal object. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. And it's actually not as hard as what you may be thinking. So the first thing you want to do is create two objects. So, of course, I'm going to just use text just to keep things simple. So I'm going to grab a text spline. And for this, I'm just going to call this one C4D. I'm going to change the font here to something like bold. There we go. I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm going to call this one Maxon. Push the Maxon over to one side, C4D over to the other. And now what we want to do is put these inside of a extrude nerve because if we hit render, of course, there's not going to be anything there because you can't render a spline. You have to apply something to it in order to get a shape. So to do that, We'll just go to the extrude nerve, and if you hold down Alt and click it, it will add the text as a child of that. But you have to be sure that you click the text, then Alt click the extrude nerve, and there you go. So at the moment, these are a little thin. We need to add a little more thickness to them. So I'm just going to do these both at the same time. I'm going to select both of them, and I'm going to take this up to 65 for the Z. Okay, that looks better. And now what we want to do is uh, set this up to where we can actually have some subdivision on these two meshes here. If you notice that really the only subdivision that we had or that, we, that we're getting here is all of these uh, subdividing lines on this uh, O and then over here we've got some on the C some on the D but other than that all these other ones they're, they're really not subdivided at all and we're going to need to create a lot of subdivision so that our PBLRP node can uh, break those apart and cause some nice uh, fragmentation. So to do that, I'm going to go to the cap segment. I'm just going to do both of these at the same time, so select both of these. Go to the caps, and for the type, it's currently set to ngon, and we want to change that to quad. Okay, so things are kind of looking a little odd at the moment what we need to do is enable the regular grid. Okay, now we've got some uh, polygons here showing up and that looks pretty good. Now you may not want that many or you may want more. It really just depends on what you want. So be careful when you adjust the setting here for the width. Don't go too far with it because the lower you go the more it's going to be and if you go too low then it's going to fill up everything and it's going to cause, uh, it, it could possibly cause the viewport to kind of crash, slow down, so be careful with that. So I'm just going to leave this at 10. And then of course we need some subdivision on the inside. So let's go back to Object tab, and for subdivision I'm just going to take that to and maybe 8. Okay, so there we have our subdivided text looks good and now we need to make this editable so with both of them selected all you got to do is click on the make editable and if you notice now it's given us uh, the main object and just to show you what it's doing here the main object of course it's in blue because I'm in poly mode at the moment but there is the main object 
which is the center parts and then we have the front and rear caps which are these two but at the moment the caps are separated from the main object so what we want to do is select the main object plus the two caps and call up the uh, this is the connect objects plus delete command now I've put it up here in this little toolbar that I made but you can get to it by going to objects connect plus delete so what that's going to do is it's going to take the uh, the main object here which is the main extruder plus the two caps and it's going to connect them and then it's going to delete the original one that way it doesn't give us a copy so I'm just going to go ahead and do that there we go but it still needs to be optimized because if we click it and I'm just gonna go to point mode and if I grab one of these points here like this one here and pull that out you'll notice that you can see on the inside and that's not what we want that means we've got these points it looks like one point there but it's actually two points taking up the same space so what we're gonna do is make sure you don't have any points selected and run the optimize command and click OK now if you don't know where to get to that all you have to do is go to function optimize and now you can see by grabbing the point now those two points have basically been welded together to create one point alright now we need to do the same thing with the maxon text so we're just going to select all that connect plus delete optimize and there we go okay now since we're going to be dealing with thinking particles we're going to need to set up a particle geometry object so we need to go to objects thinking particles particle geometry and we can just take these two and for now drop them inside and I'm gonna call this one C4D and this one will be called Maxon I'll just put that up at the top there okay so in order to get that nice arc of movement that I was getting where these particles are these fragmentation pieces are going to be going up in an arc and then making the way back over we're going to need to create a null object so let's create a null and then let's just raise that up to about there alright so now we need to right click on the particle geometry object and go to cinema 4d tags espresso so here's the Expresso editor. We need to go to right click, new node, and we want to go to thinking particles, and we want to create a generator, in this case the pblurp, so we'll go to TP generator, pblurp. And we'll click it, and now here's the parameters for the pblurp node, so we can close this out now. And the first thing it's asking for here is the objects. So before we start, I'm just going to create two materials one is going to be the red color the other one is going to be an orange I'm gonna give the red to the maxon and the orange to the C4D and we don't need these four selection tags there so I'm gonna select them and delete them okay and now I'm just going to hide these two objects from the viewport and the render and I'm just uh, clicking the tree here to turn it red. Red means it's going to be disabled. So make sure you got both of those. And notice that we lost our attributes window here for the pblurp node. So in order to get back to it, all you have to do is double click the Expresso tag, click pblurp, and that'll bring that back up for us. So the first thing we want to do is drop in the first object that's going to start the morph, and that's the Maxon text. So we'll drag drag the maxon in there the second thing that's going to be in the animation path is going to be the null object so we'll take the null and we'll drop that in notice it's creating a path spline for us that these particles or these fragmentation pieces are going to be following and then of course it's going to finish up with C4D text just like that now notice we got a little bit of a twist going on here and it doesn't exactly look like an arc it looks more like a you know a sharp A there so what we want to do is take this null object 
and we need to rotate it to kind of straighten that out a bit. So I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees. And if you hold down shift when you're rotating, you can actually rotate this in five degree increments. And it's a whole lot easier instead of sitting here and going, oh, I'm almost there. Oops, you know, and you got point, oh, well, I missed it again. And you're going back and forth. And it's, it's just a whole lot easier just to hold shift and to do it in five degree increments. Okay, so now we need to move that. Uh, actually, uh, we'll just play around with this. It's kind of arcing off to the side there a little bit, and that's that's something we can actually correct with the uh, settings for the p blurb node. Okay, so let's go back to those p blurb attributes, and now what we need to do is select max on. And what we got to do here is change some of these settings. So the first thing we want to do is the tangents. Now the in and the out tangents. Now for those of you that don't know what a tangent is, um, I'm just going to basically give you a, a basic overview of what a tangent is. So I'm just you don't have to do this. This is just to explain what I've got here. I'm just going to create a spline, just a basic linear spline. Okay, in the shape of a almost kind of like a triangle sort of just not completely closed and I'm going to click this point there and of course we can move it around but what if we wanted to get rid of that sharp point what if you wanted to round this out to create more of an arch well all you'd have to do is choose the soft interpolation mode and now it's been rounded out for us now of course again I've got the button up here on my toolbar but in order to get to it you just go to Structure, Edit Spline, Soft Interpolation. And now we have this handle here. And all you got to do is grab hold of these little black dots on the end of this handle. And you can play around with the spline. This is what's known as a tangent. And you notice that we can take this in or out, and it will determine the roundness and the, uh, the arch and the shape of the arch of this spline. So that is what a tangent is. Okay, now since I've explained that, now imagine, if you will, this orange spline that is right here. And imagine if we had handles. Now, of course, they're going to be invisible. And you can't see them right now. But imagine if there are handles here, and you want to control the handles in order to keep the spline a little more straight. If you notice, it's kind of like going off to the right, kind of bowing outward. So let's go and play with those in and out tangent parameters for the pblurb node. So click on max on, or your first object, and we want to start playing around with this in and out tangent. So playing around with the in tangent, that really isn't doing anything. So let's try the out tangent. There we go. And now we've got control over that. But if you've noticed, the from to is set to Z and plus Z. But the way I want to set this up is that I want the top of the text to start defragmenting first, and then it's going to work its way down to the bottom of the text. So what we need to do is we need to change this from plus Y to negative Y. You see, as soon as we did that, now our spline has changed. So now let's take the out tangent, and now you can see it's giving us the ability to create a soft arch. So now let's go down to the C4D text. Let's do the same for that. And let's also play around with our, uh, on this in this case, since it's going to be the end object, we need to play around with the end tangent. And there you go. So now we've created this arch between the two. And now what we need to do is animate this animation phase setting because this is what's going to determine uh, the, uh, the whole animation. Because if we hit play, you notice that there isn't anything happening. And that's because we need to animate this phase. So I'm on frame zero. And I'm just going to control click the little black circle to create a keyframe. I'm going to go down to 180 frames 
and I'm just going to take this up to 100%. Control click to make another keyframe. Go back to the beginning and I'm going to hit play. And there goes our pieces and they're defragmenting and turning into C4D. Now you notice that these are more like big chunks rather than little small fragmented pieces. And the reason for that is because we need to go in here and change some more settings uh, for the P blurb. Now some of you may be getting some little white tiny particles showing up, uh, the thinking particle dots. And that's one thing that kind of can slow down your viewport depending on how many that you have. So what you could do is go to objects, thinking particles, thinking particle settings, and for the view type I have mine set to none and I think by default it's set to dots I believe or maybe it's maybe it's ticks yeah there we go and of course you hit play and now you got all these thinking particle dots that, that start to show up well sometimes these these things get in the way and you want to get rid of them so all you have to do is go to your, into your settings and change the view type to none and now it'll get those out of the way and now we can have a better view of the text and what's going on. Okay, so let's click on Maxon and we need to go down here to the count. Now the count is currently at five. We need to take this up. So I'm going to say maybe a good number of maybe a thousand. And we need to do the same for the second object. And maybe you don't want that many. Maybe you like big chunks. So maybe you can kind of play around with these uh, with the count settings. But for this, just going to keep it simple, going to keep it at a thousand. So now we'll hit play. And now we have all of our little tiny pieces beginning to morph. And of course, it's starting to slow down the viewport. This is really going to put your processor and your graphics card to the test. So just like that, there you go. We've used the pblurp node to morph one object into another. And of course, all you have to do is light your scene and render it. So, I hope that this has kind of given you an idea of what the pblurp node is, how to use it. Maybe some of you guys can come up with some cool morphing ideas. Uh, if you want to, you don't actually have to use one null object. You can actually create multiple nulls and position them over your scene. And then this trail of fragmenting parts will actually follow the path that those nulls are creating back to the uh, place where the object will be put back together. So hope this gives you some ideas of uh, how to use it and what to do. And uh, thanks for watching, guys.